we're going to begin with a film that even if you've not seen, there's a good chance you're very familiar with one of the most quotable lines from it. Badges. We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. <laughs> but Scott will perhaps <laughs> at least show us whether it's any good or not. Yes, uh, this is the treasure of the Sierra Madre, which, uh, well, we're starting off strong with a film that's commonly held up as a strong contender for Houston's best film. Uh, it is, of course, an adaptation of the Fallout New Vegas DLC Dead Money, uh, which sees Houston's frequent co-conspirator Humphrey Bogart as Fred C. Dobbs and Tim Holt as Bob Curtin, as down in their luck uh, in mid-twenties Tampico, after being scammed out over their pay on an oil rig construction project by an unscrupulous boss. An unscrupulous boss, imagine that. Um, later, in a grimy hotel, they meet an old-timer, Walter Houston's Howard, a gold prospector who claims to have found fortunes and lost them, but feels there's one last find waiting for him up there in the Madres. Uh, the three team up and raise the stake money for the initial investment in gear for an expedition to the mountains, and true to his word, Howard finds a spot that's rich for the taking, even if that taking is long, laborious, difficult work. Howard also warns that the gold has an effect on a man's mind, certainly when combined with the isolation of working in such uh, remote conditions. While Dobbs and Curtin dismiss this, sure that their partnership will remain strong, it's not long before Howard's proven right about this too. It's not just simple greed that starts annoying at them, Dobbs in particular, but some interlopers into the situation, such as Bruce Bennett's James Cody, who tracks Curtin back from a resupply trip, unconvinced by the tale of them being game hunters. He wants in on the action, but before the trio can get round to declining this invitation with a terminal refusal, a group of bandits appear. In the gunfight that follows, they are, before they are seen off by the Federales, Cody cops a fatal case of lead poisoning. Reasoning that the situation is getting too hot, Dobbs, Curtin and Howard resolve to divide up the spoils of the mine and head back to civilization. but Howard is called away by local villagers to provide medical aid to a sick child. And without immediating presence, Dobbs and Curtin have increasingly heated arguments up to the point where crazed Dobbs shoots Curtin, resolving to make off with all of the gold. However, the bandits may have other plans and Curtin isn't quite as dead as Dobbs thinks he is, having managed to crawl away saved by the local villagers and Howard's administrations. Somewhat recovered, they go after Dobbs and then the bandits, where they, they can reclaim their uh, but not the gold, now scattered to the four wings. While there's a lot of things happening in the Treasure of the Sierra Madre to fulfil its billing as an adventure flick, the most interesting things by far aren't any of the shootouts or the mine cave-ins, fine as they are. It's Humphrey Bogart muttering to himself as he falls deeper into the grip of paranoia, <laughs> suspicion and assorted ill intents, which is a joy to watch and, if anything, the film could do with more of it. Holt's curtain is a reasonable blank slate for Bogart to bounce off, although I don't think he's able to play at the same level as Bogart or John Huston's dad, which is perhaps less a criticism of curtain and a reflection on the talents of Bogey and Houston Senior. So, a good adventure film with great performances and a solid underpinning exploring how greed can destroy your character set in a beautiful, rugged Mexican mountainside. What's not to love? Not a lot. It's not exactly breaking with film critic dogma to say that Treasure of the Sierra Madre is, you know, good, but it is what it is. I would say uh, that this, I, I would say that this is a film you must watch before you die, but only because watching it after you're dead is going to prove tricky. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just a terrific film. I don't know, it's, it's kind of portrayed, or not portrayed, described, and I, can, I think at the time publicised more as an adventure film, and it's, it's not. It's a character piece, <laughs> really, about as Walter Houston himself start. He says, I know what gold does to men's souls. Yeah. Uh, and it's really interesting, and... It's possible that it kind of lets Curtin away a wee bit too softly at the end because he had agreed to murder a person because for some money. <laughs> um, however, he never actually got to that got that far, so I will allow that the character may not have gone through with it, um, hmm. and so he remains a largely sympathetic character. Um, and you're right, he's a he's a bit out of his element, but again, it's not that he's so bad; it's that like he's surrounded by people who are so good. Yes. And Humphrey Bogart is superb. It's not the first time we'll be seeing that in this episode, and it's not <laughs> the first time I've said it on this podcast before. He and Walter Houston work really well together. We've seen that before on To Have and Have Not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're a great deal of fun together, um, with Walter Houston playing this sort of slightly dopey, kind of alcoholic bum guy um, in that film. It's, uh, yeah, he's just great. Uh, if anything, I just thought... He seems to speak awfully quickly. 
Yeah. It's just presumably <laughs> a choice. I don't remember it being in there, for instance, and to have and have not in other films. I've seen Walt Houston and, or Sergeant York for that matter, um, which John Houston obviously wrote. But yeah, the standout is, is Humphrey Bogart um, and that sort of descent into paranoia, the gold fever that he gets. Yeah. Uh, is really good. It's actually, that part of it isn't actually quite as good as it is in The K-Mutant. If you want to see more of that, while The K-Mutant is not nearly as good a film as The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, Bogart's performance in that paranoia Mm -hmm. is even better in The K-Mutant. Right. It's just something apparently he could do really well. (laughs) This belief that um, it's going to... He's like, even though his eyes aren't swiveling, you feel that his eyes are swiveling. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, and he's just he's playing this really well but yeah, he's kind of muttering to donkeys and it's a really really good film with like kind of some deep comment on the human condition underneath there um, and you know what drives men yeah I don't actually have a, enough lot to comment on it beyond what you said though it's just it's really good yes <laughs> um, there's a reason this is um, long been considered a classic there are at least one in particular film in this episode where I thought it was very good, but I don't necessarily see why it has maintained its um, its reputation as like a classic because there were so many other good films. But this one, I absolutely would argue, is, is a, as a classic that deserves to still be remembered and watched today. Absolutely. 